live from Austin, Texas. I'm here with John Gossman of Microsoft. John, you're the uh, you're an architect. Can you tell me what you're an architect of? So I work on Azure, and really my focus is about the whole developer experience for the cloud. I'm an application developer by uh, origin, and um, I th I think a lot about what it is to make uh, application developers happy. My goal, really, I was talking to somebody about my definition of, uh, of PaaS, is no more beepers. I want to go back as an app, as a client developer. I didn't get woken up in the middle of the night because I had a bug, and I want to make that sort of experience the uh, same sort of thing for cloud developers. Awesome. So you mentioned you'd actually had some hand on experience, hands on experience with Kubernetes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, we worked uh, with Google on Kubernetes. Uh, our contribution really is to get Kubernetes to work on Azure just like it does on other uh, cloud platforms. So if you go and look in the uh, Kubernetes GoodHead project, on, um, you'll find basically different scripts to set up the master and the minions and set up the network so that uh, you can then just use Kubernetes on Azure just like you could on any other cloud. And then how do you all use uh, Docker, Docker underneath Kubernetes? Uh, we don't actually have any projects at Microsoft that are using uh, Kubernetes ourselves, mm -hmm. but uh, you know it's the Docker usage under Kubernetes in Azure is just like any place else. It's Linux VMs running uh, the Docker agent, and then Kubernetes deploying the various uh, pods into those minions. Cool. And then, just looking forward to conclude with, what do you see as the next uh, the way you see PaaS playing out, or as we said before, the technology formerly known as PaaS. Yeah, I think uh, it's going to become uh, much blurrier between PaaS and IaaS. I think a lot of PaaSs are effectively just runtimes running on top of IaaS. The advantage of that is uh, that, one, it's an easier step to take. If you have something that's already virtualized, you can just move it uh, perhaps an intermediate step of moving into a Docker container, into a VM on IaaS, and then pick up various additional services and runtimes that are traditionally what we call paths. So there's the incremental adoption phase. And then if you run into a uh, limitation of your PaaS platform, you can reach down to the lower level of abstraction and work with IaaS to work around whatever that problem is. Awesome. John Gossman, thank you so much.